Hi guys, my name is Victor, I live in 50 kilometers of Paris in France and you're now watching Crocker Josh and his best friend Diesel on YouTube. Good morning, everybody. Whoa, 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 whoa. This guy has never seen a roundabout before. Okay, he's kind of confused. You don't need to stop. There's no stop sign. If there's nobody here, you just roll on around there, buddy. Yikes, he slammed on his brakes pretty hard there. So we're in Balgoni, Baloney, Bel Balgoni, Baloney, Saskatchewan. I've already gone quite a ways. We slept in Saskatoon last night, so I've already come all the way down here. And uh, I was just enjoying my morning until I realized, hey, I haven't even said hi to you guys yet. So, hello. It's just a tour across the prairies again today on our way home. I'm gonna be home for quite a while after this trip, uh, about a week or so, I think. Uh, this truck has an appointment for a full service. Uh, I've also got some oil problems. Turn left on Range Road 173. Uh, I've got oil leaking out of my blow-by. Uh, which probably means that my uh, crankcase breather or oil separator is a little gunked up, it's a little old and needs to be replaced. Well, that's a couple hundred dollar part and along with the full service, it will be fun. Turn right on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 1. I'm already on it, Karen. Almost called her Mandy again. Am I ever going to get used to that? So yeah, so this truck needs a couple of things looked at. Again, I know it's been in the it's been in the shop a lot lately, but it's, I haven't been spending a lot of money. It's just been a lot of little things, and this one could turn into a bigger thing. I mean, the only reason oil could be coming out of my blow-by is if the crankcase breather and oil separator isn't working properly and it's instead of pushing oil back into the engine it's sort of gunked up and seized maybe and or almost seized or sometimes it stops filtering oil properly and then instead of putting the oil back into the engine it spits it out the blow by tube right onto the ground so uh that's that so we'll be home uh until after Canadian Thanksgiving, which will be next weekend, or when you're watching this after, you know, it's a little time after. Get ready for some home time videos. I hope you guys still tune in. Lots of stuff going on at home. We're in the left lane gang today. We're going home. That means we're uh, hammering down as hard as we can. I'd like to get home before the sun goes down. But it's a race against time because the sun goes down earlier and earlier. Days are getting shorter quickly. You know, I'd like to sit inside one of those new Volvos once. You know, I've been harsh on Volvo. Say I'd never buy, but I know. Speak out of frustration some days, but you know, when the time comes, I'm, I'm gonna hold on to this truck probably for at least, well, at least another five years. So I got a long time yet for Volvo to convince me that I should remain a Volvo driver. You know, these new trucks, they are actually really nice. I just wish that they'd have more of a classic model. Like, they used to have the, uh, what was it called again? The 880? Volvo 880? You know, it had the long hood. It's a really heavy truck, though, but they used to have more of a classic look. I don't know why they discontinued it. I guess they weren't making money or something. I, w I really wish they'd come out with a little bit more of a showy truck, a little bit more of a classic truck. Maybe they will in the next half decade but I, I know that these trucks are pretty amazing on the inside like mine's actually pretty small compared to some of these Volvos it's like driving a motel room or a hotel room around for the most part so I don't know I'll, I'll look into it when I get a new truck but I'm still shooting for the, the studio sleeper W900 Kenworth that's the truck I want That is the truck I want. I want to get a used one. I'm thinking in about five years. We'll see maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Depends on uh, how this truck performs. But I think I can get another five years easily out of this truck. Maybe more. Maybe more. 
I'm just over a million kilometers right now, so I do about 200,000 kilometers a year. So, you know, in five years, that's another million. Then I'll be at two million kilometers, and, you know, I could always rebuild the engine, and this thing would be good for another two million kilometers after that, as long as I maintain it, and, you know. Why buy a new truck and spend however many tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars when I have a truck that's working just fine, right? I mean, it's not the fanciest truck I got here. I, it's a Volvo. I, I get it. I get it. I'm the first to admit it's a giant minivan. It's nothing to show off, but it's it's mine. It's working. You know, only about another year and it's mine completely. Maybe sooner. I'm trying to get it paid off sooner. But I may just keep it. See, my truck is very much like this one on the right, except mine is white. A little bit of a shorter sleeper. And if you remember the, the last Volvo that we passed, it had a much larger sleeper. It was deeper, longer, and wider. This is exactly like my truck. So they are good trucks. I mean, and why do I want to buy a new truck, right? I, I, I'm on a crusade to pay off all of our debts. Like we, most of the stuff we own, a lot of stuff's all paid off already. Uh, we got a couple of like my pickup and the, the terrain and uh you know the house the stuff we got a couple of loans we're paying off but by the looks of it i mean we should be debt free with on everything aside from the house in uh five years right we just got the house we could even have the house paid off in uh 10 years and unless if i buy a new semi truck then i've got that loan on top of everything and then but you never know you never know like I don't see debt as a, a bad thing. I see it as a necessary thing, but it, it's something you have to be very careful with. Whitewood, Saskatchewan. At the co-op. There's a Petro Pass right across the street, but I think I'm gonna go to the co-op. I think I am, because I'm already here. Oh, what's this over here? Electric charging stations. No way, check this out. We're gonna drive straight towards them. Would you look at that? Tesla charging stations. You can charge your electric vehicles here. That's pretty cool. So they're already putting in infrastructure out here on the prairies. Well, that's good. That's good. Because they got a lot of work to do, like I've said in the past, if they want us to use electric vehicles. All right, cool. I'm gonna take a closer look at those. I'm just gonna park the truck. Fascinating. I wonder how long it takes to charge. So let's go check these things out. Hopefully my audio is not all messed up because sometimes when it gets windy, my audio, my audio gets a little messed up, but check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six charging stations. Tesla. Look at that, on the prairies. So I wonder how long it takes. Operating temperatures, minus 30 to plus 40. Well, that's not good because it gets below minus 30 here. So I guess in winter time, on the coldest days, too bad for you electric car owners, you can't charge your vehicles. But fascinating. That is brand new. So what do you guys think about that? I'm glad that they're actually building infrastructure here on the prairies of Canada. I thought this would be one of the last places that would see new electric charging station infrastructure at a gas station. I guess it's an electric station now. That is so interesting. My, my biggest question is how long does it take to charge your car? How long do you have to leave it out here? Because look, I mean, you're going to charge your car, you're going to back it in there, right? And you're going to charge it. All you got is a tiny little convenience store here and nothing else. So what are you going to do? Just like surf Facebook on your phone while your car charges for eight hours? Or like you can't, there's no motels nearby you can go to, no stores, no nothing. Uh, I mean, there's a Petro Pass across the street there, but it's just, it's just another convenience store, right? So my biggest question is how long does it take to charge? If it takes less than 15 minutes, hey, that's pretty cool. 
as long as you can get about a 500 mile range out of that that's good i mean i'm all for the electric car thing i just i have big reserves about it because the electric car the batteries in the electric cars they don't they're not as environmentally friendly as people say is my phone making noises what in the world I thought someone was talking was that you diesel I thought someone was talking to me they're not as environmentally friendly as they they make it sound because sure they're not putting emissions directly into the air out of the vehicle right but that power has to come from somewhere now i don't know what saskatchewan's main power source is i know in manitoba it's hydroelectric power it's from big water dams up north so that's pretty clean it's pretty clean i mean like uh compared to coal or any other en energy but if you spread this technology worldwide and even across like the, the developed world a lot of that energy comes from coal plants or other plants that produce a lot of emissions so really all you're doing is moving your emissions from coming out of your tailpipe to coming out of the stacks of the nearest power plant where that electricity came from so really it doesn't lower it at all and those batteries that they use in there they're lithium ion batteries they only last a certain amount of time they don't last forever and then they become depleted and you can't use them anymore when they're depleted it's very hard to like you got to replace them very expensive very expensive so then you got to replace the battery the old battery it's very hard to dispose of it properly most times they just go into landfills on the other side of the world and sit there and they don't decompose they'll be there for tens of thousands of years just sitting there unless if we come up with a way of reusing that material and who knows you know with seven billion people on the planet maybe they'll come up with a way to reuse that and i hope they do because that's my main concern is those batteries just go and sit in a landfill for the rest of eternity once they're depleted and they don't even last that long they last what a few years and up here in the cold weather especially in winter time i can see problems with charging because it says it doesn't work below minus 30. it gets down well below minus 30 here quite often throughout the winter i don't know what we're going to do then like what if that's your only source of transportation well too bad for you you can't charge it here uh because you have to charge it somewhere else and uh there's there's several hurdles we have to get over but i think we can do it i mean and i think they could create an electric semi truck that doesn't look completely dumb and that actually looks pretty cool and could be affordable maybe in the future like we got a lot of work to get there but i'd drive it i'd drive an electric truck as long as there was decent amounts of places for me to charge it that the charging could be done efficiently and quickly again with the problem with the batteries that they could last long uh, you could have a long range like five to six hundred miles a day you know I'd, I'd buy an electric truck and if if that's the direction the world's moving hey i'm i'm okay with that i guess but uh there's a lot of infrastructure to be built and it seems like they've ha already started here in Saskatchewan and I'm I am genuinely surprised by that I thought this would be like I said one of the last places to get something like this so I don't know how many Tesla owners are out here on the prairies but if there's at least six of you you can charge your cars all at the same time here at the co-op in Whitewood <laughs> I don't know let me know your opinions on electric vehicles down below in the comment section what on earth is this He's just giving her too. Just giving her. He can't see around that. He doesn't have mirrors. He doesn't even know I'm coming. What in the world? That's a big scraper. Just a giving her. Holy. So I posted that picture on uh, Facebook just now of those Tesla charge stations. And a couple of you who own Teslas commented on there. And uh, by the sounds of it, uh, those electric motors on these last about 1 million miles this is B brian griffey that had told me this on facebook sorry if i pronounced your name wrong there uh apparently those electric motors go up to 1 million miles and it's six thousand dollars to replace the battery pack that would be american i assume because he's in the u.s so probably about eight thousand dollars canadian he says you do lose some range in winter he loses five percent of its stated range when it's cold outside but i i responded to him i said well what's cold to you because in the u.s yeah. cold to them is not always what we define as cold unless you live in like montana north dakota and then you understand our level of cold and i'm wondering how will they even operate in negative 40 degree weather 
and he says his Tesla cost him 41,000, batteries are expected to last 300 to 500,000 miles. So that's uh, 500,000 to uh, 800,000 kilometers. That seems like a big stretch, because I was told that it wouldn't last that long when I looked into it, because I was looking into buying a Tesla a while ago, and they told me that they're expected to last five years. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe he owns one, so what? he should know more than me. I'll trust him. I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's not as expensive to maintain a Tesla as I thought. And you know, what if something breaks? Where, where do you go to fix it? Is there a Tesla dealership you gotta go to? And how much does that cost? Is it sort of like servicing a Ferrari? <laughs> That's expensive. So there's a lot of things that I got questions on it and maybe it's more affordable than I think. But the simple fact is that they still don't produce a pickup truck that I like. They do have some kind of truck in the works or something, but I think it looks ugly. Looks like, looks like a Jetson mobile or something. I don't want it to look all futuristic. I just want it to look like a nice square body pickup truck. You know? I want it to have four wheel drive, good heating in the winter. Guess we'll see what they come up with. Who knows? If they're building these in Saskatchewan already, who knows? Maybe in a couple of decades, we'll all be driving electric vehicles. I mean, we're gonna have to really update our power grid for that, and uh, our electricity companies are really gonna enjoy that. But hey, maybe with the increased volume of electricity that we're consuming, maybe electricity rates will go down. That's a big maybe. All right, Headingly. Stopping at the Flying J, we're gonna grab some fuel. I like to park the truck with full tanks of fuel. I fill up my DEF too because the last place we stopped at didn't have DEF. It was just a car block in Lloydminster. So we did make it all the way to Winnipeg here. I still have. Uh... Make a U turn if possible and then turn Oh, Karen, right. Karen! Talking, Karen. I have just below a half a tank. So we only used like just over a half tank to get here. All the way from Lloydminster, that's about a thousand kilometers. A little over. 620, 630 miles. Oh, the first one is open for us today. I'm going to pump number one, numero uno. Oh yes, right front and center. <laughs> I don't know. Fill us on up with some go-go juice and be on our merry little way. We'll be at home in a few hours. And I wasn't lying, here we are. Just putting this video together and then I'm gonna get it on the internet for you to watch. Thanks for watching today. Hit the like button if you liked it, hit the thumbs down if you thought it was terrible. Let me know how I can make it better in the comment section down below. We've got a lot going on this week. It's gonna, a lot of, gonna be a lot of home time footage in the next coming weeks, so just bear with me. Hope you guys still do tune in. Lots well, going on around here, uh, behind the scenes, and you know, get a little bit of a different look at the life of a trucker when he's not on the road. Talk to you later. Hi guys, my name is Victor. I live in 50 kilometers of Paris in France and you're now watching Trucker Josh and his best friend Diesel on YouTube.